I'm a hire trainee and I work under a consultant. Within my team I've got also a junior doctor as well, so there's three of us um, within the one clinical team. Your clinical team becomes your family. You can, you know, go, go to your consultant with any worries or concerns that you have. Equally, you can go to your junior colleague as well, and it's all about having that good communication. Communication is usually what makes a family work, so you become a family and you learn to rely on each other and trust each other when, when needed. My role really is a training role. Because I'm a, a still technically a, a junior doctor, I'm training, so I'm almost, you'd say, shadowing my consultant to see how it is that she works in this setting. And as junior doctors, we change rotations yearly or six monthly to get that wide array of experience so that when we're consultants, we are equipped with the skills and the tools to be able to you know, really do the best for our patients and look after them. So it's it's a learning role, but there's also a lot of chance for you to be able to get hands-on. For example, if your consultant's on, on leave, I would then be the next more senior clinician in the team. I really decided that psychiatry was the specialty for me mainly when I was in med school, which is quite early on. I did my psychiatry placement and I remember seeing the consultants and how compassionate and involved they were with their patients in terms of really being invested in their recovery and caring for that individual. And I just thought, you know, that's the type of doctor I want to be. I want to really know my patients and I want to help them from a genuine place of concern. I don't want my patients to end up just being numbers that are being processed in and out. That was sort of the main part of it but another part of it is you know I like many other people have experience with mental health issues I have been diagnosed with panic disorder and that affected me very early on in life and I never really understood it and I was always ashamed of what it was because I just thought this was some weird anomaly that was wrong with me but as I sort of understood my anxiety a lot more and understood that this is actually a medical condition that can be treated and managed and be controlled. I felt even more passionate to learn how to not feel so isolated and alone again and not only for myself but be able to help other people not feel so isolated and alone whatever it is that they're going through. The best thing about my job is definitely the patients. <laughs> you can, just the different types of people that you meet along the way and you know the fact that I'm even thinking about my patients and a smile has come to my face, I'm thinking about particular patients. They teach you as much as you can teach them, if not they teach you more I think in terms of life experience. I think people forget that the doctor-patient relationship, it works both ways. I come into work to help my patients but reality is they're also helping me to become a better doctor and to deliver better care for patients moving forward. Seeing my patients, chatting to them, whether that's in a formal situation or, you know, we're just passing by the ward and it's like, hey, how are you doing? You know, that's probably the best part of, of doing what I do. The trust were incredible. I was met with absolutely zero resistance. In fact, my husband, who's also a doctor, he doesn't work in this trust. He used how my trust supported me in taking the time off as leverage for his trust and said, my wife, she works for JMH and this is what they're doing, so <laughs> you better give me the time off as well. Honestly, it was I was so shocked at how easy it was. There were certain levels I had to go through, like obviously speaking to my immediate clinical supervisor and then above him and then above. Everyone was just like, yeah, go for it, that's amazing. So zero resistance. The only people that really knew that I had gone away for the TV show were the people that needed to sign me off in terms of leave. So it was all kept secret until the show aired, which was a year later. So when I got back the next day, I went back into work. And I could have taken another couple of days off because I had the leave, but I just, I was desperate to get back into my normal routine and my normal life. And it was so nice being back on the ward and seeing those familiar faces. So yeah, a lot of people didn't really know until the show aired. I think when you do these type of things, when you 
to leave your life for a while it can go two ways either you realize that you're not living the life that you want or you realize you are and I think it, for me it was the latter I realized that I actually really loved my life and I loved what I do so to come back and almost forget about everything that happened in the previous two months and get back to my home and get back to my career it was so lovely I can't even describe it that literally is why I went to work the next day I was so jet lagged I was absolutely knackered but yeah It is an immensely rewarding um, field to go into. Like I say, you get to know your patients so well, you get to know your, your clinical team so well, but it does require a level of emotional resilience and a lot of self-reflection if, if that's something that you want to go into. But I would, you know, looking back at my career, and I've been in psychiatry for a very long, long time now, <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. Like, I feel like I made the right choice, even though I made that choice very early on in my medical career. I feel like it was the right one. Thinking back to my career, having made the choice of wanting to do psychiatry from medical school, I, I don't have any regrets of going into psychiatry. I laugh. I cry, I have fun, I feel joy along with my colleagues and the service users and that's something I don't think I would have got from any other specialty.